Good evening, Rivers of Life Church family. I'm Minister Mark Lewis presenting to you today our Resurrection Week service here. So I'm going to be teaching from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And the title of my message is Resurrection Week Continued. All right. The objective of my message is to remind us of the events leading up to the crucif crucif crucifixion of Christ. Primary scripture is going to be John 13, verse 15, for I have given you an example that you, you should do as I have done to you. Please bow, bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Lord, asking that you will speak and that, that you may be heard, Lord, that you will touch hearts, touch minds. Lord, I'm the first one to recognize who the true teacher is, and that's you. Precious Holy Spirit, we ask that you teach. Lord, forgive us of any sins that we committed by thought, word, or deed. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Amen. So I hope everybody's having a great week, whether you're at home chilling, watching TV, finish exercising, you walk around with holes in your socks, holes in your shirt, walking around with your shower cap, whatever you may be doing, I hope that you're having a blessed week so far. And again, I'm happy to be before you here. All right, so we'll go ahead and get off and rolling. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the, the last days of Jesus Christ's life before his crucifixion. All right, so we're going to start with John, John chapter 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So who is he that he loved? Speaking of the disciples, his 12 disciples. And the supper being ended, the devil having already put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. All right, so we're all familiar with the story of Judas. Now, um, here's the thing about Judas that I want to bring out uh, right here in the beginning. Judas conspired against Jesus to betray him. So if we look at Luke chapter 22, it actually goes into detail on how that how, how that went down so it talked about him uh, meeting up with the chief priests and they saw how they might kill him and they were going to pay Judas money to set him up and to betray him to sabotage him and um, if you look at Luke chapter 22 verse 5 it says and they were glad and agreed to give Judas money all right so that's the pretense to what's leading up in, in this Passover. So how does this relate to us? 
the situation between Jesus and Judas. Well, before we, before we get into how that relates to us, Judas sat under the words of Christ. He sat under his teachings. He sat under his miracles. Jesus even called him friend. And he still betrayed him. So what that says to us, we may have friends, family members, acquaintances, co-workers that may do things that are, are not in our best interest. They may smile at you, but not really happy when they see you. Or may try to do things to hurt you or to sabotage you. It does happen. If it happened to Jesus, then, then who are we? It can certainly happen to us as well. And a lot of you have been betrayed, you know, been stabbed in the back, you know, been turned on with people that you trust. And Jesus had Judas around because he considered him a friend, much like many of us who have befriended people that we probably shouldn't have befriended. Okay? So that's the, that's the part of that that I want us to, to get out of that with uh, Judas and Jesus. So we're looking back at John chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. So, of course, we know that Jesus was sent by God, was impregnated um, with the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, with his mother Mary, came from God, and then he was leaving to go back to God, God the Father. Verse 4. Jesus rose from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. So again, we have the Last Supper here. So in John, it doesn't go into specific detail about the actual supper. But we know that they sat down, they had bread, they had wine. And the Last Supper was kind of like a, a last meal. If I could relate it to anything, it would kind of be like a death row type of thing, death row sentence. Not the record label, but the actual death row in prison, where usually when an inmate is on death row, the last two hours of his life, he has his, his last meal. So that last meal may be lobster, steak, shrimp, whatever they can think of. Each state is different. Some states allow for them to have a $50 allowance for, for their meal. Some allow 15. Some just allow whatever they're serving in the cafeteria that day. Hopefully it's not a bologna and cheese sandwich. And then you're gonna die with a, a tummy ache, more than likely. So what would you request for your last meal? I know what I would request. I probably would request oodles and noodles as my last meal. I know you're probably thinking oodles and noodles. Why oodles and noodles? Oodles and noodles because I would eat one noodle at a time and take my time until I was finished. Like, hey, you done with your, your meal? Nope, I still got some noodles left. They would have to take me screaming, kicking, screaming, and biting. I ain't going willingly. I go screaming like Mariah Carey on her hit song, Fantasy. All right? So in our day and age with death row, you have what's called a warrant of execution, which authorizes the execution and the protocols for it. So they have to go through the protocols of putting the inmate in specific places, making sure his health is good, even though they're going to still kill him, making sure wherever they're going to execute him at, the room is secure, making sure the phones work just in case the governor calls in to stop the execution, which can happen. And while death row inmate is on death row, they spend most of their time appealing their sentence, uh, trying to get life or trying to get off death row, which has happened. There's some inmates that, that get their appeals granted and they end up getting life in prison. Or some have even, even come off death row. I've, I've seen some stories where um, people have gotten off of death row and, and was released. Uh, maybe through DNA evidence or um, a, a false witness came forward and said that they lied with the testimony and they had to release that prisoner. 
Okay, some of you guys have seen the stories where these people are awarded, you know, a couple million dollars for, for being in prison and they was innocent. So that does happen. But with Jesus, that was not the case. All right, so a death warrant. A death warrant, once it's signed, the execution is due to begin within 24 hours. So they have 24 hours to live once that death warrant is signed by the warden of that prison. So more people have been hung since 1776 than any other method that's been out there of executing prisoners. Other methods that's been used, firing squad, electric chair, lethal injections, and Reverend, Reverend Rodney's personal favorite, the gas chamber. Just joking, that's not his favorite. So currently, uh, most states use the lethal injection. They give them like three different needles, um, one to like stop their heart rate, um, one to like paralyze them, and then one to pretty much end their life. Right, so definitely not a situation you want to find yourself in. So the reason I brought that up is, is because Jesus, again, was on a type of death row. He wasn't taken into custody at this particular time. But if we relate it to our, our day and age, that would be a type of death row that he was kind of actually going into. All right. So we'll pick up at um, verse 4. So he rose from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. So in those days, they had on two different outfits, if you would. They would have on an outer outfit, and then they would have an, an inner outfit on. So what Jesus did, he took off his outer outfit. So he wasn't naked or anything like that, just in case anybody was wondering. All right, so he took, he took his garment off um, and took a towel and guarded himself, girded himself. Excuse me. After that, he poured water in the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, you are washing my feet. So Peter was totally taken back by Jesus washing his feet. Why was that? Why do you think Peter was taken back by him washing his feet? He was taken back because the washing of the feet was for the, the lowest servant or the, or the lowest slave. So for Jesus to wash his feet, it was kind of a contradiction to, to what they always have known. Again, which is the lowest servant or the lowest slave out of everybody washing somebody's feet. So when you think of feet, you think of that's something that most people don't really like to mess with too much. You think of nasty feet, dirty feet. And in those days, they walked around with their feet out. You know, they, they walked for miles, miles and miles. So you can imagine some of them probably had corns on their feet, bunions, you know, all types of stuff. And, again, Peter was just, just taken back by this. And let's see here. So, again, Peter asked him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will after this. Peter said to him, you should never wash my feet. Jesus, Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part of me. If I do not wash you, you have no part of me, no part with me, excuse me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So Jesus is, is telling him, hey, this is, if I wash your feet, you, you're a part of me, you're with me. And Peter instantly has a change of heart and says, hey, not only wash my feet, but wash my head and my hands too. So now Peter not only wants a, a pedicure, he wants a manicure and a facial too. He just won't go with the program, will he? All right, so what is the significance of Jesus washing feet. It showed Jesus' true humility 
and servitude. It took away the disciples' reason for being selfish. It was a pride killer and taught them to love. Instead of them being up here, it brought them down here. So if our master, if our Lord and our personal savior, the God of the universe, wash his feet, then what is it that we should do? Also, the washing of the feet was a type of, of anointing. When he washed their feet, he anointed them. So the disciples, again, we know in Acts that they, were, they was responsible for starting the church. So with the gospel, we take the gospel and we, and we carry the gospel. So we, we need our feet to carry the gospel. So he's anointing their feet to carry the gospel. Also, we were serving one another. With us being in the body of Christ, it's not about us. It's about what we do for other people. So right now, that's going, uh, something that's going on is the March Madness. Some of, you, some of you may watch basketball, some of the gentlemen out there, some of the ladies as well. You have March Madness going on, which is um, college basketball, NCAA basketball, where you have 68 teams playing all the way down to one championship. It's probably one of the best tournaments that you can ever be a part of, ever watch, probably other than uh, the FIBA World Cup, where you have so many teams playing against each other. So in the March Madness, uh, this particular March Madness has been special, uh, of course, because of the COVID that's going on. So it's not uh, big crowds in the, in the games and things like that. And the, the biggest thing about this March Madness is, is you have a lot of top-ranked teams being knocked off, being put out of the tournament. And why is that? I believe because the, the lower ranked teams are using teamwork, the unselfish. There's been some really, really good games. Kansas Jayhawks got blew out by, I want to say, 40 points. 40 points by uh, a higher ranked, a lower ranked team, excuse me. I think it was USC, if I'm not mistaken. And USC is not known for basketball. And USC really took it to them, but they, they had great teamwork. They trusted each other. They had fun while they was doing it. And that's the same way with us. We should have fun while we're serving, and, and we should do it unto the Lord and not be selfish and, and give back because God has given back to us, and, and we want to do likewise. So how does this apply to us? Us being servants, serving one another. Um, also, um, going back to... The Last Supper, the significance of the Last Supper, one of the significance, uh, significance of it is Jesus had to leave that table. He had to leave that table, eat his last meal, so that we can sit at the table in heaven eternally, forever. If he doesn't get up and, and leave that table for us, then we have no table in heaven to sit with him at. So his last meal meant our eternity, a chance at our eternity. For those, those of us who have accepted Christ, that's, that's the significance of that. Luke twenty two twenty nine. it states, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So the Lord wants us with us, wants us with him. Excuse me. So all of this ties in together. So examples of washing feet, serving the poor, feet, feeding the homeless, giving, uh, mentioning the gospel to others that, that may not know who Christ is, working in the parking lot ministry, working in the prison ministry, even cleaning up the church. There's so many different ways that we can serve and wash feet as Jesus washed feet. It's something that we may not like to do. We may find ourselves in some dark situations, some uncomfortable situations. But the Lord said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. So wherever we go, 
He's always with us. And we do it into his name. We do it into his name. Amen. So there's three, in my opinion, this this is me speaking. It's three most important events to ever happen on this earth. One is the birth of Christ. Two, the resurrection of Christ and the rapture of the church is three. The birth of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and the rapture of the church. So with the rapture of the church taking us away from here, it's like, hey, you know, peace. We, we out of here. We going back with the Father. So I can see somebody looking up like, hey, you coming down from there? Nope. I see you when I see you. Tell the homies to pour out a 40 ounce because we out of here. All right. So what do I want you to take from this? One, with the Last Supper, one of the most important things is in that is, again, the Holy Communion. We, we do that in remembrance of his, uh, his body and his blood. The bread it represents his body. The blood uh, rep represents the wine. And we take part in that to remember him for his last supper, for, for what he did for us on Calvary. So we're truly thankful for that. We're truly thankful for that. All right. So we'll uh, go ahead and pick up here where we left off at. So Jesus is telling them, hey, um, I'm doing this to, to wash your to wash you, and um, this is because you're going to have a part of me. And Jesus, uh, verse 10, Jesus said to him, he who is, is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. So now he's saying there's somebody that's not clean there. And we all know who that is, which is Judas. And that's another thing about Jesus. A wonderful thing is that he even washed Judas's feet, even though he knew that he was going to betray him. And again, with many of us, we've been betrayed, we've been stabbed in the back, we've been turned on, we've been sabotaged, and we still have to be gracious. We still have to show grace, we still have to show mercy, as Jesus did with Judas. Verse 11, for he knew who would betray him, therefore he said, you are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garment, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say very well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wa wash one another's feet. So we talked about that, washing one another's feet and serving. For I have given you an example, which is uh, my primary verse here. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master nor is he who is sent greater than he, he who, who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So again, Jesus is giving him his, his, his last final instructions. This is not his final instructions, but a set of his last final instructions. He's empowering them. He's anointing them to, to, to go forward. Again, they're going to start the church in Acts, and he's giving them his, his last set of instructions. All right, and we're, we are to continue to do these things as he spoke here. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. He said, those who know these things and do them will be blessed. Amen. So that concludes my teaching for today. I appreciate everybody's attention and time. I hope that you're having a blessed week. I want to extend the prayer of salvation out to those who may not know who Christ is. If you don't know Christ today and you want to get to know him, all you have to do is say, Lord, save me. 
accept Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that he died for your sins, and you shall be saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if you believe that, if you call, called out the name of the Lord, you're saved and we welcome you as a, as a child of the Most High. Amen. Again, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed rest of the week. And we'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you for joining today's broadcast. Please visit us on our website at rolcm.org.